What's up, Acolyte Squad? My name is Prince and I'm an urban acolyte. And this video, I want to talk about why I feel that it was a mistake to include Luke Skywalker in The Mandalorian. I feel like it was a mistake to allow Grogu to go with Luke, for Luke to be the person who answered the call that uh, Grogu sent out on the Seeing Stone uh, there on Tython. Now, I know that you know, a lot of people are excited about this. People are feeling real good. Yo, man, I mean, it's nice to see that for once, uh, the majority voice that I'm hearing are people who are loving Star Wars. Star Wars is back. I love Star Wars again. I'm a big Star Wars fan again. Star Wars, the, the Mandalorian finale made brought tears to my eyes. Uh, like this tweet. If, uh, if you cried when you, when you saw the Mandalorian, right? I mean, we had this big moment. It's like the Rogue One Vader moment where Luke comes in. He answers the call when the heroes are pinned down. Luke takes out all of these uh, these dark troopers that Moff Gideon is like, oh, you thought you won, but how are you going to get out of this? And it's like, oh, shoot, how do we get out? And all of a sudden you see that X-Wing, you know, it's Luke Skywalker. Here he is with the green lightsaber and he's doing awesome things in the hallway, just like his father did uh, at the end of Rogue One uh, at, before Luke started his hero's journey in A New Hope in a new hope, right? It's an awesome moment. It's something that is going to live on for, I mean, it's part of, it's part of the Star Wars story now, right? People are not going to forget that Luke showed up and showed out. And I mean, Hey man, that, that's great. That is awesome. But I want to, I still want to stress that I feel like it was a mistake to include Luke Skywalker in the Mandalorian. And I'm going to tell you why. So, I mean, I've always, always been big on stressing that, yo, man, this this is a story. This is a chance to tell a new tale, to build up, introduce new heroes like they have Phoenix Shan, Kara Cynthia Dune, to uh, continue to build on Bo-Katan Kreese's story. Uh, but she's more of a bridge to connect Din Djarin, someone who was not who was affected by the stories that we've had, but he's kind of an outsider. And now he's got the dark saber. He's completely connected to rebels, the clone wars, uh, Darth Maul. Like he's, he's part of everything now, right? What happened with Obi-Wan, you know, even, you know, going all the way back to Anakin and Vader and, and Luke, like he's connected to everything now. And we still don't know what Moff Gideon, what his real intentions are who he's working for. And I felt like, you know, I've seen people say this show's called The Mandalorian. We need to have it be about The Mandalorian. Now, I mean, we got that moment with Luke. You know, it was great. It would have been nice if it hadn't been spoiled for me. And maybe I would have enjoyed it more. But even if it hadn't, I still would be saying the same thing now that I feel like it was a mistake for Luke Skywalker to be in this story, right? Everything doesn't have to be a uh, part of the Skywalker saga. And now you've established this thing where the fans are going to be watching these other shows, these other spinoffs. Where's Luke? Is Luke going to show up here? Right. You turn Luke into Superman. Right. Help us, Obi-Wan. Your only hope. Right. Superman, help me. Right. And, and Luke is going to show up out of nowhere. And I understand, you know, this is this is the period of time where we're building on the legend of Luke Skywalker. But you guys need to remember, we know how his story ends. We saw it in The Last Jedi. Everybody's like, oh, uh, not everybody, but I saw a lot of people saying, oh, this totally makes up for the shitty sequels. Well, does it? Because that's still the story. We haven't retconned what happens to Luke in The Last Jedi. We haven't retconned The Force Awakens, The Last Jedi, and The Rise of Skywalker. There, there, that, there's no reboot. That's still Luke Skywalker's story. The legends of Luke Skywalker show that Luke was, you know, learning different ways of the force and doing some heroic stuff showing up. So we know that Luke was showing up just out of nowhere and, and doing heroic things before he took on a student, right? And why, I mean, that, that brings me to my other point of why I feel like it was a mistake because I mean, 
you know, somebody, the Prince, you hate Luke Skywalker. I don't hate anybody. I don't feel this is fiction, right? I have, I'm neutral towards all of it. I just examine the story and I say, this is what I think, right? And if what I say doesn't mesh with what ends up coming later, oh, well, this is what I think based on what I know at this point in time. And what I know about Luke isn't going to suddenly change because his story is not going to suddenly change. Luke is not a good teacher. Luke, from what Pablo Hidalgo was implying leading up to The Last Jedi, Luke never wanted to rebuild the Jedi or take on students. Right. He just want Luke just wanted to be Luke and, you know, pursue enlightenment or find peace with himself and with the galaxy and to to end suffering. Right. The best way he, he knew how. Right. Uh, Luke's Luke's greatest strength is his compassion is what Pablo was telling us before. Right. The most powerful Jedi knows how to put down, knows when to put down the lightsaber. That's what Luke did in Return of the Jedi. He put down the lightsaber in, in order for Anakin to return and in order for the Jedi to return. But did they? Because Luke was kind of like, well, you know, he tried to train Leia and Leia, we find out. And I knew that Leia had received training from Luke. We didn't know why exactly she elected to stop her training. I uh, knew that since The Force Awakens uh, in the uh, the uh, young adult or teenage version of The Force Awakens novelization before Ray leaves for Achto, Leia says, you know, I was I had the opportunity to train as a Jedi. I was going to do it. And I stopped. Right. And then we get the final story of that in uh, in the force in, in the la the rise of Skywalker. Sorry, I went through all three of the movies before I could think of the name. Right. But what happened with Luke and, and Ben Solo? Right. What happened with Luke and Ray? It didn't really it's not going to he didn't even want to teach Ray. Yoda had to step in and say, look, man, we can't let her fail. And did Luke actually train Ray? Not really. He was like, I'm going to give you three lessons, three reasons on why uh, you don't need the Jedi to accomplish what you're set out, to, what you want to accomplish. Right. Three lessons on the force and why the Jedi need to end. Right. This was kind of pretty much up to Ray. She took the books and then, you know, after Luke was one with the force, then Leia took up what Luke didn't. Right. Um, what happened with Ben? I failed you, Ben. Right. What happened with Luke's other students? They died. Ben actually did kill three of them. Right. One was an accident, but he killed the other two. And then what about the other students? We really don't know. Did they die? Did some of them manage to survive? We kind of don't know yet. Right. And that's what I was saying. If, if Grogu goes with Luke, it's not going to work out well for him based on what we know right now. All of a sudden, oh, Luke had another student in between Leia and Ben that we didn't know about. And it's Grogu and you just got accepted, Prince. Well, why did why did Luke succeed with with, you know, baby Yoda, but he couldn't succeed with everyone else? He, he all his other students either died or turned to the dark side, like even Ray died. But, you know, Ben returned to the light with the help of his mother and, you know, and gave up, you know, his residual, his remaining force energy that actually Ray gave to him. He returned it back to her because he was going to die and she saved his life. And he's like, well, you're you're more important than me. I'm going to return this gift that you gave to me. You gave me this gift so that I could turn to the light and I'm giving it back to you so that you can continue to allow the light to shine. Because she's Ray, right? We've always kind of known that. But, uh, you know, I, I just don't feel like Luke. I, I said, why, why Luke will not train Grogu? I still don't believe that Luke is going to train Grogu. We saw Grogu leave with Luke, but we don't know. We don't know what's coming next. Right. So there was an interesting uh, thread or post that I saw. On uh, on Twitter, you know, Mando spoilers from this girl fangirling only. It says training is not what defeats the darkness in a Jedi. 
that has failed multiple times in canon. Darkness cannot be trained out of them. It can only be loved out of them. Separating a child from its parent is it is the original wound that sends a Jedi down the dark path. But I said that I don't necessarily think it's love. I agree, but I don't agree with, oh, man, it's it's love that's lacking. Right. Uh, but it's acceptance. And this acceptance first has to come from a parental figure, a guardian or a mentor. Right. And then I said, I'll have to make a video about this. This is the video. Right. So think about Anakin. We learned that if Qui-Gon had trained Anakin, he would not have succumbed to the dark side. He would not have fallen to the dark side. He wouldn't. And why is that? Because he wouldn't have had Palpatine as the person who accepted him as he is. Right. I was really thinking about this. Uh, there's this soap opera version of Siddhartha Gautama's journey um, to enlightenment. Siddhartha Gautama meaning the Buddha, right? And there's a point when 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 Siddhartha becomes enlightened, he is no longer Siddhartha, right? He goes back to uh, was it Lumpini Park in Nepal or whatever the the kingdom is where he where he should have be become the king, right? He was the son of the king, and he would have, you know, as a Kshatriya clan uh, he would have you know instead of being the sage of of the shakya clan he would have been the the king the warrior the warlord right the chieftain of the shakya clan and conquered all of nepal and india and he was supposed to conquer the world right that was the prediction for siddhartha right but when he returns home and he sees his father he sees his wife and, he, and he's looking at her and he's like, you know, I love you, but Siddhartha's not here, right? I have seen all of my previous lives, my previous ex existence, and, and I've seen the cycle of birth and rebirth and death, right? And I am all of those people and none of those people, right? So yes, this, this body was your husband, right? But this person who inhabits this is, is, realizes that they were all of the other people that led to this moment. But we're getting back to the acceptance. But this moment, this attainment would not have happened without you supporting me, without my mother and my father giving birth to me, without every person that fed me, nurtured me, taught me, everyone. This is not just my enlightenment. This is your enlightenment too. acceptance. Right. Anakin being the chosen one did not have that acceptance, right? It was always, he was a tool, right? If he is the one to defeat the Sith, right? If he is the one to bring balance to the force, that's how the Jedi treated him. Ben Solo, Luke did it to Ben, right? It's that, you know, it took him away from his family. Now, Leia felt like ben, Luke was the only one that could help him. Well, why didn't... You know, you know, I know there's a whole Leia. She saw that her training would end with the death of her son or, or something like that. That we get in the rise of Skywalker BS. Right. Why didn't Leia say, all right, well, Han, we're going to be a Jedi family now. And uh, I've got to go back in and, and train with Luke or Luke. You know, you need to really come to Chandrilla and, you know, your nephew and me. And we need to understand. Right. And then the Luke says the same thing to Grogu, right? You know, it was like, I'm, you know, I give my life for his safety. And, uh, you know, he needs training to, to beat the darkness, right? And it's not the training. It's really not everybody. Oh, you need the training, the training, right? If we're really talking about Buddhism and I'm hearing all this stuff about training and training and or Taoism or whatever, the, the pursuit of enlightenment, how come Star Wars has never ex adopted the the view that it's already there, right? The balance is already there. You just need to learn how to real recognize and realize it to quote my Sifu, right? Grogu, it, it, Grogu has this attachment and it's this fear of, uh, of, of this fear of loss, right? That we see it in a lot of people. And that is the what well, that is the attachment. It's not real attachments, right? You can have a family, you can have, but it's what these this fear of loss leads you to do, and that's why the Jedi 
forbid attachments, right? You can have a romantic relationship, but well, you can have relationships, but it can't become romantic to the point that you're attached to this person, right? Or you have to leave the order. And then what happens if you, okay, well, you were part of the order, you're a trained Jedi, and now you're not part of the, the order and you turn to the dark side, like with Count Dooku, right? Uh, and now you're, you're still a threat to the galaxy. You're still dangerous, right? It's something, some, there's a flaw to that teaching, right? And Luke is going to perpetuate that on the Grogu. He's doing it now. And I just, I don't think that, you know, I, I think that, uh, I have a, a very strong feeling that, okay, Grogu left with Luke. And just like I said in my review video, right? I said that where the story is going, Din Jaren doesn't need Grogu with him, right? Maybe they're going to deal with the restoration of Mandalore. Things are going to get dangerous, right? Whatever Moff Gideon and the Imperial Remnant, because somehow he's going to break free and he's going to be out to do something. And then Bo-Katan might, you know, be out to get Din Djarin too. Like, yo, you've got the dark saber. We need to fight and we need to fight to the death or you submit, surrender or whatever. I got to get my hands on a dark saber, right? Din Djarin doesn't have a ship. He can't do anything right. Like right now, his story is in a state of limbo because for the last two seasons, it's been all about Grogu, right? I got the child. What, what am I doing with this child? And then, okay, I, I got to look for some Jedi and I've got to return him to the Jedi, right? But now he's become attached. This is, this is boy, right? Grogu asked, asked for his permission to leave with Luke. Right. And what's going to happen when Luke is trying to teach him? And it's like, well, we saw what happened with Ahsoka. She's like, OK, Grogu, you know, take the ball. Grogu, take the ball. You do. You have to do it. Right. Grogu, take the ball. Take it, kid. Yeah. Right. Well, it's like I like I kind of said, I feel like the natural the natural progression for Grogu is that you've got you're with Din Djarin, a Mandalorian. The, the sworn enemy of the Jedi, and it's going to fall on him to teach this kid how to understand the ways of the force. They're going to have to go with this together. Right. That's what that's what I feel. And and it would be a different story. Right. That you can have a family. You, you can have a family and 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 understand the ways of the force. And, and maybe you're not a Jedi, you're not a formal member of the Jedi Order, but I mean, Grogu spent more time with the actual Jedi than Luke has, right? Luke didn't really, I mean, you know, not counting however much time passed on, on, um, Dagobah. So the only thing I really feel like that Luke can contribute to Grogu is that he spent time with Yoda and maybe Grogu goes somewhere with Luke where he can communicate with force ghost Yoda. Maybe Yoda's like, Yo, I cannot reach the kid, reach the kid. I cannot. Right. And, he, and Luke has to facilitate that. Maybe it takes him to Dagobah and it's like, well, you know, and, and Yoda's like, send him back with the Mandalorian. Right. Luke, Luke and Grogu, that is, you know, like I said, the only thing that I can see in the story that it does is it takes Grogu away from whatever Din Djarin's got to deal with next. But ultimately, those two, I mean, Din said he was like, I'm going to see you again, kid. So, no, I don't feel like Luke is going to Luke will not train Grogu. Right. Like not train as in I'm your master. You're my student. Because I'm like, Luke is not in a position to teach anybody and later, when he's older, he he he's not a good teacher. He he just isn't right. And I know some of y'all love Luke Skywalker. You love what happened with the Mandalorian. You love all of this stuff. But for Grogu to stay with Luke would be a mistake. And I've said it before. I'm going to say it again. If he stays with Luke, it's not going to every. Everything except for Ray has turned out bad that Luke has touched, right? Look at Ben Solo, Kylo Ren. Look at Luke's other students. They're all dead. You can hate me. I don't care. 
you can you can spoil season three, season four and everything else in Star Wars. If you want in the comments, that's cool. Maybe I just quit reading the comments on this channel. Right. You know, right now I'm feeling like. I'm feeling like the fanboys got what they want and they're celebrating and I'm like, are you forgetting what what happens, you know, in in 25 years in the story, 25 years later, that doesn't change. Right. That that whole uh, Ryan Johnson ruin your childhood is basically a. Uh, you just got you, you, you got dumped by a girl, right? And then after she dumped you, it's like, but what I would I, after she dumps you or friend zones you, she's like, you know, uh, before maybe she found a new boyfriend and, and she friends. Yeah, she the girl that you like that you've been sweating for forever, found a new boyfriend and she friend zoned you. And then after she does it, you, you're like, what? If you weren't with him, would I have had a chance? And she's like, I totally would have blown you. I would have curled. I would have curled your toenails. Right. <laughs> your ears would have curled. But, oh, well, I have a boyfriend now and I'm curling his toenails and his ears. Right. Your SOL. Too bad if I hadn't found this and you're just like. You know. She told you she she told you that you totally would have got the best BJ you ever had in your life, but you still you, you would have could have should have. But you still got friend zoned. Right. So why are you focusing on that thing that might have happened that maybe it did happen? But you're still, you know, may, maybe it did happen. It's like, oh, yeah, I did. She did do that. Right. And she reminds you that you could have gotten even more. But you're still going to get dumped, right? You're still going to get friend zoned. Luke is still going to ruin your ch Ryan Johnson's still going to ruin your childhood in The Last Jedi. That's not going to change. So, you know, we got our moment. I'm worried that now people are going to expect Luke to come dashing in in his X-Wing, swinging his lightsaber doing some awesome stuff. That was an awesome scene and everything else that happens from now until, uh, until the force awakened. Well, until Ben Solo burns down the Jedi order that people are, if they keep playing around telling stories in this 30 year period between return of the Jedi and the force awakens, people are going to be expecting Luke Skywalker to come in and save the day. And hey, man, I'm all for building up. It's like we got we heard about the legends of Luke Skywalker. Let's see why Luke is actually a legend. Right. Let, let's let see that stuff. Hey, man, that's awesome. But we can't forget. This is what's going to happen. His nephew is going to kill his students and turn to the dark side. Right. Luke is going to lie to Ben or withhold the truth from him about Anakin being Vader, right? Your grandfather was a great Clone Wars general and he was the best of the best of the Jedi, but he also turned to the dark side and killed the best of the Jedi, right? The Jedi Order. And he was responsible for hunting people down and plunging the galaxy into darkness. He did all of that as Darth Vader is the most hated person in the universe, in the known universe galaxy, right? And he was that guy, too. Oh, but in the in the final moments of his life, he he saved my life, Ben, and he returned to the light and the good man, Anakin Skywalker, returned. And that's the person I remember, even though he cut off my hand and nearly killed me, tortured your mother right on the Death Star before blowing up, you know, your adopted grandparents. Oh, and he force choked your grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and caused her to, to die from a broken heart, which, you know, some people think is a joke, but that's a real thing. Right. So I don't know. That's really all I got to say is I feel like this Luke Skywalker Grogu thing is a mistake. Luke, Grogu needing training. The person who ought to be training him is Din Djarin. 
The only thing Luke can do is to take him to Dagobah, take him somewhere strong in the forest where Grogu can communicate with Yoda. Uh, at this point, I mean, Luke, five years after Luke's been trying to be a Jedi for eight years at this point, Grogu spent more time probably training than Luke, right? Grogu can probably teach Luke some things, even though he's too little to carry a light, hold a lightsaber, right? So, no, I, you know, this, the fans got their moment, but season three is going to come, season four is going to come, and this is not the end. So, uh, we just have to wait and see. So, uh, I don't know what's going on with my green screen. I guess I need to stop wearing white shirts, but, uh, I'm uh, starting to look like a, a hologram in Star Wars right now. So that's probably a good time to wrap up the video. So uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Y'all keep on breathing and may the force of others be with you always.